wait and hope for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Eternal God, as we await the coming of our Savior, give us the courage to hope. Give us grace to see your plans of redemption for our lives, for this community, and for the world. Through Jesus Christ, the source of our redemption and hope. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter to the Romans. You know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery or licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, 
About that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away, so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken, and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. morning. Welcome to Advent, or Happy New Year, as some people like to say. On the church calendar, this is the first Sunday of the year. The word Advent is derived from the Latin word meaning coming. In our tradition, Advent is a time of preparation and expectation for the coming celebration of Jesus' birth and the final coming of Christ in power and glory. Advent is a time of anticipation, it is a time of waiting, and it is a time to prepare. So my questions for you this morning are, how are you waiting? How are you with waiting? How are you preparing for Jesus' return? Our gospel reading this morning is all about waiting and preparing. The best evidence that we have is that the gospel of Matthew was written well after Jesus' death and resurrection probably in the 8th century or so. Everything had been so different when Jesus was still on earth. He had challenged people to see life through the lens of love. He pushed against the status quo. He hung out with all the wrong people, those whom society deemed sinners or unclean. They, too, were children made in the image of their creator. Illnesses were healed. He was generous with forgiveness, and he offered many a new beginning. Jesus was teaching. He was trying to disassemble the power structures that pushed some people to or even off of the edge. He taught against the systems that showed disdain for the poor and the defenseless. He spoke out courageously against institutions that would protect their power, their authority at all cost. Jesus was a threat. And they killed him to protect their power, to defend the status quo. But with Jesus gone, what would become of his work? Without this compelling, charismatic, and authoritative leader to guide, to inspire them, what would they do now? Jesus said he would be back. He promised, and they believed him. They knew that when he returned, he would bring a complete change. The realm of God would be a reality, and they couldn't wait for that day. They waited with great anticipation and asked, as the psalmist often does, How long, O Lord? How long? As years turned into decades, many began to lose hope. Decades became centuries, and now centuries have become millennia. Still, Jesus has not returned. Do we even watch anymore? Except for the billboards on the highway or the televangelists predicting the exact date when Jesus will return, are we still watching? Are we still waiting? What are we doing to prepare? Sometimes it doesn't seem like much. A week ago, a little over a week ago now, a man walked into a nightclub for our LGBTQ siblings in Colorado Springs with a long gun and killed five people and injured 19 in about two minutes. Only the quick intervention of an Iraq war veteran and a drag queen with a very heavy shoe prevented an even greater tragedy. 
Three days later, a supervisor at a Walmart in Chesapeake, Virginia, killed six of his co-workers. Last night, six people were shot at Atlantic Station in Atlanta. Mass shootings targeting particular groups or just random strangers are daily occurrences. How long, Lord? How long? I don't know why it should surprise me, but I was amazed yet again at the carnage that is Black Friday. People you couldn't get to lift a finger to help a distressed neighbor will gladly line up at 4 a.m. and wind up in a fist fight over an absurdly large television they don't need. How long, oh Lord? How long? We live in a world that grows food enough to feed every single person on the planet and yet throws 40% of it away. While 38 million Americans face hunger each day and 9 million people die of hunger in this world every year. How long, O oh Lord? How long? Where do we look for hope in all of this? That's one question. In this season of anticipation and preparation, have we prepared ourselves and our world for the return of Jesus? When Jesus ascended two millennia ago and charged his followers with carrying out his work, is this the kind of world with which he expected we would present him when he returned? The author of Matthew's gospel knew it was what it was like to live in a time when people seemed to have lost direction and lost hope. As we heard in our reading, Jesus is talking about the end times, the time that would usher in the transformation to the realm of God naturally, the disciples wanted to know when that was. Jesus responds, about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only God. No one knows, not even Jesus. The key is that we need to prepare now. They needed to prepare and be prepared now. Whenever it happens, they and we need to be ready. And part of this reading is Jesus talking about men in the field and the women grinding meal together. One of each will be snatched up while the others remain. Many interpreters have taken this part of the reading and run with it. It's the basis for countless books and movies about the end of the world. Some will be taken and others will be left behind. To get to that understanding, one has to read this passage literally. The trouble is, I'm not sure that the author of Matthew intended this passage to be interpreted literally. Instead, what if we understand the men in the fields and the women grinding meal to be meant as symbols of normal, everyday life? People just going about their business as they would have been, like grocery shopping or picking up the kids from swim practice or just another Tuesday in the office. What if those who first heard this gospel from Jesus are being reminded that he tends to show up in the ordinary, everyday moments of ordinary, everyday people. The gospel accounts are full of these kinds of ordinary days. It was a normal day when Jesus showed up with his disciples at the home of Simon, only to find his mother-in-law sick and in bed. Jesus healed her, and then she got up and went about her business. That the realm of God had come near, and Simon's mother-in-law had been transformed. The man called Legion, who was possessed by demons and living chained outside of town in the caves, may not have known anything about Jesus, and yet on a normal day, those demons who did know Jesus had a conversation with him and were driven out. The realm of God had come near, and that man was changed. The day that Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was arriving probably started like any other day. Eventually, people flooded the streets to watch for Jesus, and Zacchaeus had to climb a tree to have any chance to see him. Standing beneath that tree, Jesus called Zacchaeus down and invited himself to dinner. The realm of God had come near, and Zacchaeus was transformed. Jesus changed things. Jesus transformed people. Eighty years after his death, the people needed reminding. Jesus had transformed them as well. Yes, they were still waiting for Jesus' return. Yes, they still needed to live everyday normal lives. And yet, they needed to live their ordinary lives in a different way. Awake, aware, ready to experience the presence of God. I think the author of the gospel knew that when you're aware of God's presence in the midst of ordinary, the ordinary, extraordinary things happen. We know that too. When we live as transformed people, we're able to see those places in the world where the realm of God is already emerging. I just spent a few days with my mother in upstate South Carolina for Thanksgiving. 
While I was there, she told me about how her church is building 20 tiny homes to house single homeless women in that community. I did a little research and I found out that this is like a trend. This is happening in cities all over the, the country. Finding comfort and stability for those who do not home, have homes, God's protection is felt and the realm of God is revealed. God answers the question of how long with the answer of right now and lives are transformed. 40% of all homeless youth are members of the LGBTQ community. These young people face higher rates of mental health challenges, higher rates of suicide, higher rates of physical abuse, higher rates of food insecurity than their stably housed peers. Organizations like the Austin Found Youth in Metro Atlanta work to get these young people off the streets and into stable housing where they are safer and better able to leverage support and start developing the skills they need to live independent, secure lives. Every single time one of these young people is taken off the street, the realm of God has come nearer and life is changed. Clinics like the Coweta Samaritan Clinic here in Newman or the Good Samaritan Clinic in Northwest Atlanta provide low or no cost services to our low income neighbors who face extreme barriers in accessing quality health care. Poverty reduces life expectancy. It increases the risk of chronic illnesses like diabetes and kidney disease, as well as mental illness. By serving this particular community, these organizations have ushered in the realm of God. It comes nearer to people and they live longer and healthier lives. It is true, God's reality for creation has not been fully revealed in our midst, and yet we are still waiting and watching for Jesus' return. And yet we are living in times where God's transformation is already taking place. You and I are invited into this new reality. God's reality responds to our cries of how long with the reality of the transformation that happens when God's love is let loose on the world. We are invited to be a part of that transformation even as we await the returning Christ. So we end as we began. Advent is a season of waiting and watching. But it is also a season of preparation as we get ready to remember and to celebrate Jesus' birth and anticipate his second coming. How are you doing with that waiting? How are we preparing for Jesus' return? Standing, please, let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. 
We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially Melody and Robin. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Mary. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Tim, Graham, Nick, Severn, Kate, Sherry, and Jaden. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Hasten, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold the Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, may the peace of Christ be always with you. Good morning, again. Welcome to St. Paul's Episcopal Church. If you are visiting here, you are very welcome. Um, our illustrious leader, Reverend Hazel, will be back next week. She's with her family in Asheville today. So we pray for safe travel for her as she returns to our community. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries we want to celebrate today? Any at all? Oh, I see. Yeah. I mean, I 
Come on, man. <laughs> no, no, no. That's what I'm up here for. It's when's your birthday? December 6th. That'll be here before you know it. Let's pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his court. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. 
Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, we ask that you receive into your tender and loving care all those who were killed in the mass shootings in Colorado Springs, Chesapeake, Virginia, and Atlanta, Georgia. Comfort those who mourn. Be with the medical personnel who have been entrusted with the care of the injured. Give strength and perseverance to those who work towards the equality of all people and empower each of us to join that righteous cause. Transform the hearts of those who have embraced hateful and bigoted belief systems so that they may learn the error of their ways before others are hurt. And help all people to come to know the truth that if you do not love others, you do not know God. Amen. Please join me in saying the great thanksgiving and the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.